who can actually say they're surprised to find out that prisoners are not just used to help make license plates, but work in fast food businesses for the cities, the state, or any other uh, business. Um, it's not like the 13th Amendment did away with slavery. It just made it legal to use prisoners as slaves. Just read the 13th Amendment and you realize that the United States still allows slavery. There we go. A hidden, intricate web links hundreds of popular food brands to work done by U.S. prisoners. A two-year Associated Press investigation found that everything from grains, meat, eggs, and milk had been grown, harvested, or produced by incarcerated people. And their labor finds its way into the supply chains of some of the most recognized brands and largest food companies in the world. And... A lot of these prison slavers, or the, a lot of these uh, enslaved prisoners are being used by uh, for-profit prisons, which uh, gained a lot of power after the Civil War, and slavery was quote-unquote made illegal. Uh, people wanted to re-enslave black people, so... Uh, these prisons were created uh, to re-enslave black people and force them to work, uh, you know, as since the 13th Amendment uh, only made slavery legal for prisoners. That's the reason why for-profit prisons became so powerful. These types of agricultural programs are being run at prisons across the country. Dozens of them generate revenue. Those are the green dots you see there on your screen. One penitentiary, penitentiary highlighted by the AP is the state prison in Angola, Louisiana. A prison spokesperson there pushed back on the slavery comparison, saying Angola has transformed with large-scale criminal justice reforms. The official... If you uh, look up... Uh... Uh, a lot of the penitentiaries and stuff, uh, you'll see that they've been built upon old plantation land. And there's a reason for that. Again, it was to reinstate black people. A lot of these prisons, uh, prisons were uh, created on plantation land because they didn't want to give it to black people who actually worked the land. So they made prisons to re-enslave black people so that they can continue to force black people into slavery. People pointed to other programs like educational and spiritual options that prisoners can choose from. NBC's Lester Holt met with one prisoner who took that route back in 2019. Watch. What is it like to serve time in the same prison that your father was executed in? At first, oh. Uh... It was embarrassing. I just knew I had to do something different than just do time and die in prison. I was able to go to the seminary. I graduated with a, a BA, a 3.91 average in 2013. Uh, I was selected to be a social mentor. Joining me now is Robin McDowell. She and her colleague Margie Mason are the authors of this sweeping investigation. Robin, welcome. Thanks for joining us this evening. The story that we just heard, that's just one example, right? What did your investigation find on a broader scale about the experiences at Angola and prisons that have these agricultural programs across the country? Well, we discovered um, mainly that people are being forced to work for pennies, sometimes nothing and out, nothing, nothing at all. Um, and that really these, in our opinion, are some of the most. I know some people will claim, oh, well, some of these people are being paid, uh, you know, a little bit of money. You can't call it labor. Yeah, well, just because they're being paid a few pennies an hour, 25 cents, 75 cents, a dollar an hour. That's still slave labor. That's well under uh, federal minimum wage. 
And just because people are prisoners doesn't mean they're a labor, doesn't have value. Uh, if you're paying people uh, under the minimum wage, you're using them as slaves. Most vulnerable workers, because if they refuse to work, they can be punished. Um, that can mean being sent to solitary confinement. It can mean, mean losing the chance at parole. Um, and they, if they get hurt, they really have very few protections at all. They're not protected by basic things like the Fair Labor Standards. Yeah, and this is the kind of treatment people get when unions don't exist. I mean, this is what uh, business owners want. They basically want to enslave people, to have them work for free, so that, that they can make as much money as possible. If corporations had it their way, this is how society would be. This is why these corporations that are using prison labor are so okay with using prisoners as slaves. Because all they care about is money, not people. This is why unions are important. This is why regulations on corporations and businesses is important. Because without that, we'll just all be enslaved to corporations. Exact. Um, if they're injured and if they need, if they're if they're killed, um, the prison labor. Reform Act makes it very difficult to sue. And we're hearing comparisons to slavery. Let's remind people what the third... So if you're forced to work and you die, well, you, your family can't sue because how messed up is that? You're, you, you're enslaved to work and your family can't gain any compensation if you die. That is not how a functioning society should be. A society like that honestly shouldn't exist and the fact that this is happening is pretty crazy that corporations can enslave prisoners have the conditions so harsh that people can die and there's no legal repercussions for them. 14th Amendment says about slavery, quote, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Robin, what can be... <coughs> yep. I'm surprised they're actually talking about this. <coughs> yeah. The 13th Amendment does make slavery illegal, but you can become a slave as uh, if you're uh, convicted for a crime. <coughs> This was done to re-enslave black people because <coughs> they wanted, the North wanted to make it seem like they were ending slavery, but they actually weren't. <coughs> they were making slavery legal as a punishment for a crime. This is the biggest reason why for profit prisons exist. It was to re enslave black people uh, after, uh, during like the Jim Crow era and stuff like that. They made a bunch of bogus laws to punish black people. They would arrest them and use them as slaves. This is the reason why cops exist. They started as slave patrollers, became Confederate members. After the Civil War, they became cops so that they could arrest black people and help the prisons uh, 
gain a population to be used as slaves. It's another reason why the for-profit private prisons can sue the state if they don't have enough population. Uh, they have contracts with the state to have a certain amount of population in the prisons, and if that doesn't happen, they can sue the state for money. Hey, Don, if this is enshrined in our Constitution. Well, I think people need to remember, you know, a lot of things that are legal are not necessarily right. We can look directly at slavery. Efforts are underway now to make changes to that, um, to the amendment, and also similar language in state constitutions. I guess that is a start. Um, there are also efforts to try to get people who are working behind bars or as part of work release programs to at least get paid fairly and to be protected. We know this investigation calls out really large companies like McDonald's, Whole Foods, General Mills. Do they know what is happening and have they responded to your reporting? Yeah, these companies obviously, obviously know what is happening and what they're doing. I mean, companies, capitalism is about making a profit over anything else. Morals doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is making a profit. And that means forcing people to be slaves? Uh, yeah, business people are going to do that. Because that means more money for them. And that is all they care about. Well, just to make a distinction between how these goods are ending up in the supply chains of some of these biggest products, some big companies buy directly from big prison farms and others through third party suppliers. So I think it depends on how closely they are connected to the actual initial purchase, um, whether or not they know. Did anything surprise you during your research as you conducted this investigation and where do you see this going in the future? I think really what surprised us, surprised us most was the lack of protections if something went wrong. Um, I think there are a lot of things to continue looking at in this area, things that you know, I can't really talk about here, but, um, but this is really a, a rich area for, for um, investigation. Mm -hmm.